We're all working from home now, and one of the benefits from my job is that I get to choose my own computer. So I've got in this box a recently delivered Alpha Sync from eBuyer. And the Yodel driver just unceremoniously dumped it on the drive on its side and uh, the tapes popped open, but I'm hoping it should be good. And just to let you know, the criteria for this was that I went on eBuyer, choose gaming PCs, ordered it by the most expensive and then just bought that. Literally the most expensive gaming PC off eBuyer. Let's see what it has. Hello you. Right, just to let you know the spec. It says AlphaSync Gaming Desktop PC. It's an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X. 3.4 gigahertz, 32 gigs of RAM, four terabyte hard disk drive, one terabyte SSD, an AMD RX 6900 XT, Wi-Fi and Windows 10 Home. So I'm gonna turn it on its proper way, despite having this bottom that's already kind of coming apart. So let's get in there. Interestingly enough, I did have a look between the differences between Windows XP, <laughs> XP, Windows 10 uh, Professional, Windows 10 Home, and really there's not much in it. Depending on your use case, you really probably don't need the Professional. If you do everything online and, and use Gmail and all those things, G Suite, I can't see any benefit at all for getting Windows Pro, apart from maybe BitLocker. Free award-winning online protection with Bullguard. Mm, okay, you might want that. Well, it's all in the box and it looks pretty good to show you there. Uh, I can't see any obvious signs of the damage and there's nice foamy things. So the only things that probably could have shifted would be inside the case. So I'm gonna get it out of that now. Yeah. Not really sure where to grab it. Probably ought to have just put it on upside down and just lifted the box around it. Oh, here we go. Got it out by the foam. Okay, let's see what else in the box. You've got a smaller box full of parts. We can get rid of this massive box now. Now this is one of the rare times where I've actually bought a built PC. I normally either assemble them myself or just use laptops. Okay, so first things first is it looks absolutely lovely. Uh, it's got some clear panels. I think the top looks clear, the side looks clear, and it feels like, without being able to push my teeth on it, ah, ah. I think it's plastic, I don't think it's glass. Now on the top we have power, a couple of USBs, a USB-C, microphone and a reset. So those are oh, buttons that you can access there. So let's see what it says on the side here, because it's got a little sticker on it. Important, please remove the internal packaging before turning on your PC. So there's something inside it we've got to remove. And the front you can see is, is kind of just quite plain. I don't think you get disk drives and whatnot anymore and stuff, so that's fine. Now let's turn it round. There is a Corsair logo on the top, so I don't know. Is it a Corsair case? Do Corsair make cases? Oh, potentially they do. Is that a panel? Ah, look. There's me messing around with it. Again, not... It might be glass, actually. I think that is glass. There's a nice bit of mesh on the top there. Let's see what you get on the back. A PS2 connector of all things, a couple of keyboard low-level USBs, and then four, I guess USB-Cs, but these ones are, um, are kind of a green colored. I don't know what that is, what that means, special one. HDMI on board, more USBs, ethernet audio connectors, graphics card, and that's got two display ports, whatever that little thing is. Oh, USB-C, uh, HDMI, and you've got Wi-Fi built in and a pure supply. So it's all nice and simple. But I think what we really want to see is what's inside it. So I'm going to turn it this way and figure out how you get the back off. So it's got some nice captive nuts here. This is a really nice case. 
Now, I know I recycle a lot of old cases, so maybe I'm a bad judge of cases because all my cases are really old and I just keep using them over and over, but this feels very nice. In fact, I'm not quite sure how it opened up. Oh, oh, there was a panel on the front as well. And the panel on the front shows three massive fans on it, so I'm hoping this thing's not going to be too loud. Come around this way actually, I'm having quite a lot of difficulty figuring out how to get this panel off. Doesn't seem to be anything obvious. I've undone the two knurled knobs from the side. So that was these things here, you can see them. And there are these little catchy things, but they don't seem to be doing anything. I'm kind of a bit hesitant, of course, to force it. Could have a look at the front, I suppose, in case there's a catch on there. I've just got a nasty feeling it's going to bang down and something is going to fall out. I have to admit, I do like Corsair. I've got one of their power supplies in the uh, back office current machine and it's got loads of cool options and lots of cables that you can plug in and unplug because so you can keep all of your wiring harness nice and, and um, basically optimised because you only connect the connectors you need at that time. It doesn't look like there are anything any catches or anything like that though to release that front panel so I'm just doing it wrong and there's your little filters look at all those fans though this thing's going to be a demon when you start running VR on it I wonder how quickly it can munch through some heavy compiling back to the side trying to get my nails in nope I suppose there's always the option of reading a manual. Always an option to have a look at the manuals, I suppose. So we've got some bump there, warranty cards. Is there a water cooler in here? I thought it was an air cooler. And there's those cables I was telling you about. And there's the bag actually that comes with the power supply. Unpacking and setting up your PC. <clears throat> Remove the side panel and take out all the internal packaging. Yeah, if I knew how to bloody do that. Why is this so difficult? <laughs> That's really quite heavy there. And that is hiding this big old water cooler there. Look, big radiator there on the top. So it's blowing it out the top, hoofing it out. I am getting quite distressed though at this, this side panel issues. I don't know if you're like me, but I end up running them with the pie panels off most of the bloody time, so this isn't going to help. I look through my phone and I'm imagining it looks like there's a couple of catches, as if you just pull it this way, so here goes nothing. Ah, that's all it was. Yeah, moron. Look at that thing. That is a huge piece of something that looks very breakable. So let's remove our foaminess. There's not much else in here really, it's empty. I bought an empty box. Because <laughs> this is normally where you'd have all of your hard disks, right? But I don't know where they've put them on this. I was expecting slots at the front because I normally have quite a stack of, uh, I use those eight terabyte uh, spinning metal disks and have piles of them in my server cases, but this case certainly does not have one. So you've got your big uh, Radeon graphics card here and your Corsair cooler. Of course, it's a Corsair case, so it all matches. And I like this integrated power system here and it's a USB. That's probably just to power that. Or is it a monitoring system? Sometimes there's monitoring systems on these things. Um, you've got some really cool looking board here. I reckon this is going to do some something fancy. And just down there, that little thing in there, it says Fire Cuda. I'm wondering if that's your SSD. So that's what you have instead of a hard drive these days. So it's all teeny weeny weeny, but there should be a little bit of spinning metal in here. So I'm going to go a little bit further because I want to see it. Just going to undo this little panel here. I'm thinking the drives might be there, if anywhere. <laughs> no idea any of this fits together. Oh, there's another screw, another hidden screw down here. Ooh. I'm really grimacing. This hurts a lot, getting your hand in this position. Never going to be able to get that screw back in. Oh, 
There it is! <laughs> How are you supposed to get at that bloody thing? Oh, I think you're supposed to get it from the back. Okay. Or maybe not. So that's what you get on the back. Seems to be more cutaways for more fans. And I can definitely see the hard disk in there, and that's the hard disk connectors. Oh. <laughs> Okay, you got a little cupboard. I think you'll have to unscrew a few screws to get this off, but that's the cable management in there. Look at that, it's, they've done a really nice job of it. And I guess this could be for your RGB lighting and there's your 1200 watt power supply. It's exactly, I love a big power supply. And it doesn't look like, you, could, you can get one more drive in there at a pinch, but I think an external drive solution might be in order. Great, so let's see if it powers on. Shut that. Should probably get rid of this plastic, shouldn't we? While we're at it. Lob that over there. Want to make sure it gets maximum fingerprints, of course. So that latches on. And you screw the screws. It's quite a nice case though. I don't know what like people in the in the know, they know these cases and they'll tell you that's uh, you know, whatever, Corsair. Blah -de blah But I'm not in those circles. I'm going to be using this to play Civ. That's what I've got all that power for. <laughs> and you think I'm joking. <clears throat> oh, another foot. I keep pulling the feet off, by the way. It doesn't like you being dragged around on carpet. So you have to glue those back on afterwards. So we'll get this other one on. We could run it without the case. Um, side, oh, another foot, all the feet's coming off. And there's your first injury, look. It's not a PC case play with, unless you cut yourself. Right, let's get that on. I've introduced a good bit of dust into this case already now. I think that's christened it. Can't treat it with kid gloves. Tight. I think we're almost there. And there was a warning on there that said, um, be careful when you plug in your monitor, because you could to plug it into the graphics card and not the onboard motherboard one. So there are stories of people doing that and they're wondering why their bazillion pound graphics card isn't as performant as they were hoping. <laughs> and they're just using the basic onboard one. I'm happy it has an onboard one. Cause like I said, I've got um, a three monitor setup and they're actually quite old monitors. I'm, I'm, we have 4K monitors, but I tend to use the older ones uh, and they're DVI effectively. So I could probably hook it up to that. Right, I think we're ready to power it up. Now I'm not going to actually power it up and play with it probably too much today, but let's get some power on so at least we can see the lights. Got a trusty kettle lead here. Not the one that came with it because that's still wrapped up and I do not need another unwrapped kettle lead in my life right now. But I hope that it's got adequate fuse in here for the power that we're about to witness. Where's me hole? There it is. Let's get it in. Power supply on. Okay. Power button on. Look at that. <laughs> Did I just see in the viewfinder that these sort of come on incrementally? That was snazzy. I can see from the top a rainbow pattern, but I got to really come round to where you guys are to have a proper look. Let's get the camera off here. Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna witness it together. There's a lot of reflection here, but yeah. So you've got the Corsair thing flashing. You've got the memory flashing. You've got the graphics card flashing, and then on the front. Clearly the fans are doing a whole disco number, which I might see if I can get round to it. And the fans actually on the top also have that rainbow effect. So there's a lot of rainbow action going on. Let's pop that off. I don't know who Alpha Sync are. Is that e own brand? Oh, yes. With the light stand, it's a little bit easier to see. Isn't that a pretty thing? I'm hoping it's gonna do the business. Stay tuned, maybe I'll do a future video on this, but not for a while. 
It's going to take me a while to copy across all my junk and get that sieve installed. I suppose we could spend a few minutes to set it up while we're here and you can see I've plugged in a PS2 keyboard and that's working great and an old Dell mouse also working great so it's pretty compatible with your legacy gaming hardware. I mean I couldn't figure out why you'd want a PS2 but maybe it's uh, lowest common denominator? Is it faster than USB for those twitch reflexes? I'm not sure if you've noticed though my monitor does seem to be doing something a little bit freaky. Come and have a look. It's definitely got some crazy rainbow action happening and uh, I don't know if that's an incompatibility with something or it could just be a bad wire. Obviously a bit further along in the setup process I have um, allowed it to install something this um, Asus Armoury crate and I think it's something to do with the motherboard so I was like okay with that. I went through the menus and there was very little there actually there's hardly any if any bloatware at all I mean if you just scroll through there it's just pretty standard stuff but it does have this Corsair application pre-installed and I suspect it allows you to do stuff with the RGB lighting because you can see here the water cooler and the uh, memory and of course it does this lighting core which I think was one of those components we saw behind that little door that was controlling some of these RGB lights. So if we move the camera so we can have a look I should be able to access these and play with them at the same time. So we can see this spinning around and it's telling me the fan speeds and whatnot and the pump. Not really sure. Ah, lighting effects. There we go. Oh, there you go. See, you can just turn them on and off instantly. Look, you can even choose what side. So I'm choosing what side of the shape is illuminating. <laughs> then I guess we can revert back to defaults. So that's cool. If it's annoying you, you can just knock them all off. But I think it would be fun for the boys and girls at home, because I know you're interested in such things, to try to get hold of a benchmark. So I'm going to Google and see what's a typical benchmark program, and we'll just run a quick one. Because honestly, this is going to sit in the corner now, uh, running SSH to Amazon AWS servers, loading up um, Excel spreadsheets and PowerPoints. So it'd be a shame, shame not to do it. You can see I've just installed Steam on the hope that there's something on there we can benchmark with because unfortunately not having a CD-ROM drive or DVD-ROM drive on here means that there's some things we will never know. What will really test this power? Some Terraria perhaps? Some Gary's Mod? Speedrunners? I think we're going to have to look for some specific testing software. God, I really hope Starlink gets here eventually. Our rural internet's so terrible. I seem to spend half my time just watching this screen. It's finally done and to totally share the moment with you, I'm gonna launch it from here. Let's see what it does. Hopefully it won't require to install some direct X driver. Unfortunately, clearly it is installing DirectX. Why doesn't it come with DirectX pre-installed? Bill Gates, you're not thinking with your head, you were thinking with your heart. Now you've got a lot more free time on your hands, these are the sort of things you can fix. The benchmark is loading. This looks so good. I want this to be a game I can play and these weapons be available in it. <laughs> Okay, it's finally finished. So we can see here in the top left corner, right there, it's saying it's great. It's not the best, but it's pretty great with this 17,237 whatnots. The graphics score is an 18 and the CPU is a 12. So I guess it's taking some sort of aggregate between the two. So the CPU is bringing it down to Chinatown. And it's giving you an estimated game performance in Battlefield 5. It's saying 170 FIPS. And you can choose a few here. I guess some of you would be playing the 4090. Let's see, you get 180 plus in 4090. Um, Oh, in 1080p, which to be honest is the resolution of this monitor from most of the monitors. I, I might swap out to 4K, but again, you tell me, should I swap out my three 1080p's to two 4K monitors, or should I just keep them as is? Because I do like that three monitor setup with the cheeky main boy in the middle. 
Now let's have a look else here. You've got some averages, so your score is here. Look, I'm only on the beginning of the curve. And it's saying there's a peak right here, there's a blue peak. So I'm, this is below average. Boo, e buyer, boo, this is below average. I don't know. Maybe I can get that a bit up higher if I do some overclocking. And down here, it's telling you the frame rate, the CPU temperature, GPU temperature, GPU load, all of these things. Um, I can't actually see the uh, temperature. Oh, there we go, we can turn them on. Um, you're seeing the temperature of them reaching the maximum here of the GPU temperature at 74 degrees and the CPU temperature at 50. So to be honest with you, I'm more than happy with that. This thing is running crazy quiet. I mean, during all of that, it's not a peep out of it. Whereas my other desktop PC, which frankly is also on, is probably the noise that you're hearing, um, is just roaring all the time. It's one of those machines that when you turn off the PC, you go, wow. You know, you don't really appreciate how loud they are till you turn it off and you hear pure silence. So I'm hoping that was of some interest to you. It really wasn't a planned video, um, but I'm really glad I got to share it with you. As I said, it's really rare for me to get my hands on any new equipment and uh, certainly not one that should be pretty reasonable. Um, if you've got any tips for me, you know, I, 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 I am being realistic in that this is gonna be living um, literally under a desk doing some mundane stuff but if you do have any tips for me on how to improve the 3d score I probably would be quite interested in trying it just from a, a purely experimental um, basis and I would be also interested if you know that any uh, tips or tricks to use the GPU to enhance any additional regular processing that your PC might do because uh, judging from the price of these things the GPU makes up the bulk of the cost these days and I, I think with all of the cloud uh, technology and things we're using, you could probably put the GPU to other use than just play games. Well, other than playing games and Bitcoin. <laughs> so please like, share, subscribe, consider uh, being a patron. And as ever, thank you for watching. <laughs>